We, uh, <clears throat> I mean human beings, have been evolving for 6 million years, but we're still not perfect. Turns out that our bodies have a bunch of design flaws. First of all, human eyes have tiny blind spots, never mind the philosophical ones. Such a spot is about the size of a pinhead. It's located at the point where the optic nerve passes through the surface of the retina at the back of the eye. Your optic nerves connect your eyes to the brain. They carry images for your brain to process. This is how you see. In the spot where these nerves leave your eye, though, there's a lack of something called photoreceptors. These receptors detect light and are the reason you can see. Without them, your eyes wouldn't be able to send any signals to your brain to describe what you're looking at. But because there are no photoreceptors there, you've got a tiny blind spot in each of your eyes. If people were designed perfectly without this flaw, they'd have eyes just like octopuses. It may sound weird, but the eyes of these creatures are eerily similar to humans. But their optic nerves run behind the retina. This means that the nerves don't have to leave the eye at any point. So there's no gap that causes the blind spot in human eyes. What else? Around 65 million Americans complained about having issues with their back. And this is because of evolution. Just like dogs, humans used to walk on all fours. When people were walking on their hands and knees, the curve of their spine was pretty much perfect, and all their organs felt comfortable. Because of this, there was never any pressure on their backs. Well, we evolved to start walking on two legs to save energy. The search for food took longer and longer. And when walking on two legs, people saved 25% of energy. But this was bad news for people's backs. Because this way, their spines were basically forced to turn into a column to support all the weight and make space for other organs. But if your spine was completely straight, you wouldn't be able to walk on two legs. So it evolved to become curved. But this puts a big amount of pressure on your lower back. So basically, to get rid of our pesky back problems, you should start walking on all fours again. Yeah, that'll work. Make no bones about it, people have too many bones in their feet. We have all these bones because our ape-like ancestors needed them to grab onto tree branches. Now people aren't swinging from trees anymore, but we still have all those bones, which makes us prone to damaging them, and this can be extremely uncomfortable. Think about how many times you've stubbed your toes. If we were designed perfectly, our feet would look like those of an ostrich. These birds have way fewer bones, and the parts that look like knees turned backwards are actually their ankle joints. This makes ostriches less prone to injuries and also helps them run fast. Wow, if people were designed this way, it would make the Olympics way more interesting. I'd sure watch. Now, chew on this one. Human teeth are also far from perfect. People spend so much money on preserving them. At the same time, no other animal has to visit a dentist as we do. Also, once our teeth are permanently damaged or fall out, we can't grow new ones. Sharks are the opposite. They have an endless supply of teeth. In some shark species, a new set of teeth develops every two weeks. Kangaroos also have way better teeth than people do. If we were designed perfectly, we'd probably have the same teeth as our bouncing buddies. Once their teeth wear down, they fall out, and their rear teeth migrate forward. That's not the only issue we have with our teeth. Our mouths are way too crowded. Hey, I normally have a foot in mine. In the process of evolution, the human brain grew dramatically, and our jaws had to become wider and shorter to make room for it. But this left almost no room for our wisdom teeth. In the past, wisdom teeth were helpful when people needed to break down food. But as we learned to cook and process food, these teeth weren't needed anymore. So, in short, people should just get rid of them completely. And this may actually be happening. Around 25% of people, mostly Eskimos, are now born without some or all of their four wisdom teeth. Now, it happens that our knees are quite impractical too. It's the most complex joint in the body. It's sandwiched between two massive levers, which is already pretty risky. The knee only moves forward or backward, which doesn't make it a very secure construction. That's why there's a bunch of rules in many kinds of sports, like soccer or rugby, that forbid hitting an opponent's knee from the side. To make people better suited to their new sporty lifestyle, the hinge-like mechanism of the knee could be replaced with a ball and socket. This would be like the structure you have in your shoulders and hips. 
Friends, Romans, countrymen, waggle your ears. Yep, like dogs and cats, some humans can waggle their ears. These lucky ones can move their ears independently thanks to special muscles called extrinsic ear muscles. But those serve literally no purpose, apart from providing a cool party trick. Speaking of design flaws, human voice boxes are in the completely wrong place. Your windpipe, thanks to which you can breathe, and your food pipe, which is, you guessed it, where the food goes, open into the same space. This space extends from your nose and mouth down to your voice box. You have a little leaf-shaped flap that covers the opening to your voice box whenever you swallow. It prevents food from going into your windpipe. But this mechanism isn't always fast enough. If you're talking while eating, it's incredibly easy for the food to slip down and accidentally go into your airway. And you definitely don't want that. The whale's voice box is designed much more wisely. It's located in its blowhole, away from its mouth. If people could move their voice box into their nose, they would have two separate tubes, and there would be no risk of choking. (laughs) But there would be a downside. We wouldn't be able to talk. But we could communicate through singing instead, like our whale friends. We'd be able to do this by producing vibrations in our noses, kind of like this. Don't I sound better? Hey, leave me a comment below. You like ribs? I love them. But we're not talking about those kind of ribs. Some of us humans have an extra 13th set of ribs. Between 1 and 3% of the world's population have these ribs, called cervical, and they serve absolutely no purpose. Some people have just one of such ribs on the left side or the right side of their body. And others have cervical ribs on both sides. Now, you don't really need your appendix. It may contain some useful bacteria to help when you have stomach issues, but apart from that, it's not really necessary. The worst thing is that the appendix can get easily inflamed. The appendix was originally designed to help people digest cellulose, which is found in most green plants. This was back when people's diet mainly consisted of plants and almost no animal food. So, I say, let's get rid of it. Moving on. Blood is delivered from your heart to all the tissues of your body through thin pipes called arteries. The blood flows into each of your arms and legs through one large artery. For your arms, this artery is located at the biceps. And for your legs, it's in the front of the thigh. But your back needs blood too. And still, instead of having a large artery at the back of your body, you have smaller ones branching out and bundling around your bones and nerves. This is really impractical and makes people pretty susceptible to glitches which is why you often get numb arms or legs. Bummer. How about something humorous? Take a look at your elbow. There, a branch of the artery meets up with something called the ulnar nerve. Thanks to this, you can move your pinky fingers. This is also why, when you bang your funny or humorous bone, your arm goes all numb and tingly. Ow. To fix this, we really need one more large artery in the back of our body near the shoulder blades. This extra pipe would provide the blood with a more direct route. This would also stop your arms and legs from going numb when you bump them in the wrong place. Finally, there's this tail. People still have a tailbone, even though there's no tail in sight. For our ape-like ancestors, the tail was incredibly helpful. They used it to balance themselves while jumping from one high branch to another. Now that we live in actual houses, most of us don't swing through trees anymore. The tailbone, whose official name is the coccyx, is easily fractured. So currently, it's just a design flaw. Researchers also claim that removing it would improve posture issues too. You can't recall a memory all by itself. When you're trying to think of one detail, like the color of the t-shirt your friend was wearing the other week, you'll remember some other details too. For example, the place where you saw him, things you were talking about. The hippocampus is the part of your brain that stores memories. It usually packs them together, including multiple small details. On average, taste buds last 10 days. Clusters of sensory cells in your tongue. The buds that are closer to the surface are more short-lived. That's the reason you don't have to wait for too long to be able to taste again after burning your tongue. One theory says deja vu is some sort of a brain processing lag. Scientists think it might happen when your brain is transferring information from one side to the other, and there's a split-second delay in that process. 
That means that your brain gets the same information twice and processes it as the event that happened before. Only 30% of people can flare their nostrils, and one-third can bend their thumb backward. Some people can produce a roaring noise in their heads. All they have to do is tense their ears or jaws. There's a small muscle in the ear. It dampens loud sounds, like when you're chewing. But some people can flex that muscle, and that creates an audible rumble. Your fingertips are sensitive, but hundreds of times less so than your lips. You inhale lots of different types of debris, including 700,000 of your own skin flakes, and that's only in a day. A hypnic jerk is a twitch you can experience when falling asleep. It's an abrupt muscle movement that comes during the non-REM sleep phase. It can create an illusion of falling. One of the theories is that, when you're dozing off, your brain sees the relaxing of your muscles as a sign you're in trouble and really falling so it sends signals to the muscles to protect you by tensing up. Synesthesia is a special and rare ability where people can taste music or hear colors. Only one in every 2,000 people has it. For some people, cilantro may taste similar to soap because the plant contains a chemical used in soap making. But only 4 to 14% of the world's population have special genes that can detect it. 18% of people can move both ears at the same time, while 22% can move one ear at once. People who do it use weak vestigial muscles we got from the ancestor humans, who had this in common with cats. <coughs> Bruises change their color over time. A bruise appears because there's bleeding under the skin. Tiny blood vessels get crushed, and some blood gets trapped in there. In the beginning, a bruise is red because the blood is rich in oxygen. But then, it turns purple, green, yellow, or even gray when the levels of oxygen drop. Sweat doesn't smell itself. The unpleasant odor is caused by bacteria on your skin. When sweat comes out of the pores on your body, the bacteria breaks it down into acids. What most deodorants actually do is get rid of the bacteria on your skin. People used to dream in black and white much more than today. That's because they watched black and white TV. Blue cheese is another thing that affects your dreams and makes them more vivid. Eggshells might be used for growing new human bones. Chicken eggshells contain calcium carbonate, which is something you also have in your bones. The food on the plane is likely to taste different than on the ground. That's because you lose up to 30% of your taste bud sensitivity due to the dryness and pressure in the cabin. It's especially true about salty and sweet foods. Your nostrils don't work with the same efficiency all the time. When you breathe, one nostril does most of the work, and they switch every couple of hours. You wouldn't be able to taste food without saliva. Your taste buds have chemo receptors that recognize different flavors, but they need some liquid for those flavors to bind into their molecules. Also, you can't taste things saliva doesn't dissolve. The brain can't actually feel pain. It does have a pain center, but it doesn't have pain receptors itself. When your head hurts, you can feel it because of the nerves, tissues, and blood vessels around your brain. A single human hair can support 3.5 ounces of weight. That's how much two candy bars weigh. Toenails grow almost four times more slowly than fingernails that get more exposure and are used more frequently. There must be at least some photos where you have red eyes. When the camera's flash goes off, your eyes aren't prepared for such an influx of light. Your pupils remain dilated, which is why the light gets reflected off the red blood vessels of the choroid. This is a layer of tissue at the back of your eye that nourishes your retina. The right lung is bigger than the left one because your body needs to make some room for the heart. Your teeth are the only part of your body that can heal itself. The masseter is the strongest muscle you have, based on its weight. Together with the rest of the raw muscles, it can close your teeth with a force of 200 pounds on the molars and 55 pounds on the incisors. Onions produce a special chemical irritant. It stimulates special glands in your eyes, causing them to release tears. Your nose can memorize up to 50,000 different scents and detect more than one trillion of odors. We all have our unique smell, except for identical twins. This smell is partly determined by genetics. 
but it also depends on your diet, hygiene, and the environment. Eating snow is not the best way to stay hydrated. Your body needs too much energy to turn it into water. Snow can provide a bit of hydration, but it'll also lower the temperature of your body, which isn't the best scenario if you're trying to survive harsh winter conditions. You burn somewhere between 100 and 200 calories per hour while standing. Sitting burns 60 to 130 calories, depending on your height, weight, gender, and age. Brain freeze is an annoying ice cream headache. That's how your brain tells you to slow down and maybe stop eating something that's so cold. The main purpose of eyelashes is to shield your eyes and protect them from sand, moisture, dust, and debris in the air. Your eyelashes sense when something comes up too close to your eyes, like an insect flying toward you, and trigger your blink reflex. Blinking also helps when you need to flush out some tiny particles or debris stuck in your puncta. Those are small openings you have in your eyelids. That's where the tears get pumped out. Your eyebrows stop sweat from running directly into your eyes. Your skin there and the shape of your bones also work together to direct the sweat toward the sides of your face. We're not the fastest, strongest, or biggest in the animal kingdom, but we're the best at long distance running. That's because we have long legs and our bodies can lose excess heat through sweating. Even long ago, our ancestors hunted animals by chasing them for long periods of time. Eventually, it wore smaller creatures out. Five basic senses are taste, touch, sight, sound, and smell. But people have more senses than that. Proprioception is when your body is aware of its parts and their position, even if you don't see them. Like if your arm is behind your back, you know it's there. If you were an octopus, you wouldn't know it, because these creatures don't know their arms exist if they can't see them. Thermoception is your ability to sense temperature. Equilibrioception is a sense of balance. You also have nociception, which means you can feel pain. Then there's chronoception. That's how you can sense time passing by. There are even more senses found in the animal kingdom. Electroreception and magnetoreception, but people don't have those. You can't see your taste buds. Those little bumps on the tongue are lingual papillae. There are four kinds of them. Circumvallate, foliate, fungiform, filiform. They are all covered with taste buds, except for the last one, filiform. This one is responsible for the sense of touch in your tongue. Your pinky holds 50% of the total strength in your hand. Your liver is a very important organ that works a lot and is responsible for 500 individual functions. Up to 10% of it is made of fat. The liver can regenerate. You can burn calories when you take a hot bath, as many as you would if you took a half hour walk. People mostly need seven minutes to fall asleep. This time gets shorter if you've just had a large tasty meal. On average, the heart is as big as your fist. It beats 115,000 times and pumps around 2,000 gallons of blood a day. Now, what do you call a person who can write with either hand equally well? How can you reach with your tongue into your nose from inside? And why would you even want to do that? See further if you have a real superpower. About a third of all people can raise one eyebrow, left or right. It's a great way to send a playful signal to someone while telling a joke. But the ability to raise both eyebrows separately is much rarer. If you're not among them, that's because you cannot yet control and move the corresponding muscles. But this skill can be developed. Stand in front of a mirror, hold one eyebrow with your hand, and lift the other one up and down. And then do the same with the other eyebrow. This will help you learn moving them separately. Can you sit down on the floor and get back without the help of your hands or knees? This simple challenge is called the sitting-rising test. Clever name. Although scientists argue whether this test is trustworthy in telling anything about your health, you can still use it to check whether your muscles and heart are strong enough. If you're unable to get off the floor without the support of your hands or knees, maybe it's time to return to the gym. Now stretch out your hand and place a ring on the crook of your elbow, then rotate your palm. If the ring didn't fall, you're a rare person. Some say only 2% of people can do that, but that's arguable. If you can lick your elbow easily or touch your thumb to your forearm, congratulations! You're among the minority of people. 
but some people bring flexibility to the next level. This condition is called hypermobility. It allows rare individuals to twist their bodies into weird positions, just like a snake, putting their head between their feet, doing a back bridge, and all sorts of splits. But in some cases, hypermobility can increase sensitivity. Because such people have a larger medulla, this brain area is responsible for processing emotions. Now, 90% of people are right-handed, and only 10% are left-handed. Yes, that adds up. But there's also a very small percentage of those who can use both hands equally well, including writing, drawing, and doing any tasks. Naturally, ambidextrous people account for only 1% of the entire population, which is about 70 million people. If you want to check whether you're one of them, try to write the same phrase with both hands, or draw a circle first with your right and then with your left hand. If there's no difference, congrats! By the way, these exercises are very good for balancing the hemispheres of the brain, regardless of which hand is your working one. Mirror writing is another good way to awaken your neurons. Wake up, wake up! Leonardo da Vinci used to write down his thoughts in a journal from right to left. The actual purpose of his mirror writings is still unknown, but some people suggest that he just tried to prevent smudging the ink because he was left-handed. Creating a mirrored text is not an easy task for most people. Now, most people depend on weather forecasts and have to adjust their outfits depending on the season to avoid catching a cold. But not everyone! Lucky ones have learned to keep their bodies warm in any frost. These fearless heroes can walk in the cold wearing only swimming trunks and feel cozy. They can stand in the snow barefoot and even swim in a river or an ice hole. Usually, this talent doesn't come naturally. People temper their bodies for years until they get used to withstand extreme cold. Of course, they don't do it just to look cool or feel cool. Health benefits from this procedure include better blood circulation, increased concentration, and an overall sense of well-being. And how many seconds can you stand barefoot in the snow? Not many. Okay, stretch out your palms in front of you. Squeeze together all of your fingers except your thumb. Now spread the index and middle fingers and a ring finger with the little finger in different directions. Success? If so, you'd probably make a wonderful musician, because the nerves in your palms are well-developed. Do you feel ticklish when you tickle yourself? Now, normally you wouldn't unless someone else tickles you. It happens because the cerebellum area of the brain, which monitors movements, predicts the sensations caused by your own movements. Then it sends a signal to other parts of the nervous system to cancel these sensations. But some rare individuals can actually feel ticklish on their own. If you're not among them, touching a new texture that the brain doesn't yet recognize or using a scalp massager can help to excite your nerves and bring relaxation. Okay, grab a sheet of paper and something to write with and sit on a chair. Stretch one leg and rotate your foot clockwise. Try to draw the number 6 on the paper or in the ear while still rotating your foot. This task is so much struggle because the left area of your brain can't handle two opposite rotations at the same time. That's why the brain tries to bring all movements in the same direction. Only a few people can manage it from the first attempt. You can also try to write other numbers and watch the funny results. Seems like the foot has no problem only with zero. If you want to check out the work of your vestibular system, try this simple trick. Stand on one foot and close your eyes. Most people lose balance at least during the first attempt. Your vestibular system includes many organs and systems throughout the body. Together, they allow your body to stay in balance in different positions. This system includes the inner ear and vision, which is why keeping balance is much easier in silence while your eyes are open. Every day, people use their tongue to recognize different tastes and communicate with each other. But it's also a great tool for a bunch of tricks. Around 10% of people can touch the tip of their nose with their tongue. The current title of the world's longest tongue belongs to Nick Stobel from the USA. His tongue measures 3.97 inches, according to Guinness World Records. There's also another contender whose name is in the Indian Book of Records for the tongue measuring a whopping 10.8 inches. Wow, imagine what he can do to an ice cream cone. But the average adult male tongue is only about 3.3 inches long, and the average female tongue is 3.1 inches. That's why most people can't perform the nose trick that easily. Okay, tying a cherry stem in a knot is a popular party challenge, but only a few people can do it right and quickly. 
Al Glinaetsky, set the world Guinness record in June 2014 when he made 14 cherry stem knots in one minute using only his tongue. Wow! If you want to try to beat his record, practice with patience and pick longer stems around an inch and a half long. Plenty of tutorials on this topic at your service. Stand in front of a mirror, open your mouth, and try to roll the sides of your tongue up towards each other to make a U-shape. About 65-81% to of people are natural tongue rollers, and the majority are women. Some believe it's a genetic capability, but recent studies show that people can actually develop this skill by practicing. Kitri mudra is a term from yoga that means curling the tip of your tongue back into the mouth. Ideally, it should reach above the soft palate and rest in the beginning of the nasal cavity. This asana helps refresh the mind and body and overcome thirst, hunger, and anxiety. Some say it also helps to become a professional lucid dreamer if you acquire a habit to fall asleep with Kitri mudra every night. But most yoga beginners spend months, and even years, to reach into the nasal cavity. And if you can do it right away, you're the lucky one. Can you wiggle your ears intentionally? Congratulations! Around 22% of people on the Earth are capable of wiggling one ear. As for moving both ears at once, only 18% can do that. Ear wiggling used to be a common thing for our distant ancestors. Scientists believe they could perform a variety of movements with their ears. The group of muscles responsible for wiggling is called the auriculars, and we mostly don't need it today. But some people claim that everyone can learn to move their ears. It only takes time and practice. Unfortunately, we still cannot acquire this classy habit of twitching an ear toward a sound source as dogs and cats do. Not even twins have tongue prints that are alike. The tongue is a movable and strong set of muscles that almost never gets tired. It contains anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 taste buds. Those little white and pink bumps on your tongue aren't taste buds, but each of them does have a bunch of them inside its surface tissue. Evolution gave us taste buds so that we can stay alive. For instance, sour and bitter flavors can be a sign that you may be eating rotten food or poisonous plants. The back of the tongue is more sensitive when it comes to bitter flavors which is why we can spit out bad food before we swallow it. Salty and sweet tastes tell us if foods are rich in nutrients. By the time they're 60, the majority of people lose half their taste buds. Yes, your tongue is pretty cool, and its prints can be used for biometric authentication, just like fingerprints. Each of us have a different and unique tongue print. So, if you don't want to reveal your secret identity, keep your tongue hidden. (laughs) That would be funny. Why do we even have fingerprints? Scientists had a lot of different theories, but they now believe it's because having them allows skin to stretch more easily. That prevents blisters, protects the skin from damage, and may improve our sense of touch. Humans are not the only ones with unique fingerprints. Koalas have them too. Only around 7% of people are left-handed. Left-handed people mostly chew food on the left side of their mouth, while right-handed people do so on the right. We lose almost 9 pounds of skin cells every year. Don't worry, we replace them quickly. We produce more cells than there are people living in the United States every 15 seconds. Our body is always regenerating, and we replace our skin hundreds of times during one lifetime. Yep, our body regenerates, except for our teeth. They're the only part of the body that can't heal itself. We have teeth that are similar to a shark's. Their teeth also have a thing called dentin inside of them, and theirs are just as strong as ours. Of course, theirs are sharper and bigger, but still. Teeth are part of the human skeleton, but they're not considered bones. You'll spend approximately 38 days of your life brushing your teeth, and guess what? It's possible to brush them too much. That can make them more sensitive because it wears down the natural enamel. Your left and right lungs are not the same size. The right one is bigger because the left shares its real estate with your heart. Hiccups are something almost all mammals go through from time to time, not just humans. The record was set by a man named Charles Osborne. He couldn't stop hiccuping for 68 years. Guess no one told him about the whole eating sugar trick. There's only one part of your body that doesn't get a regular delivery of blood, your corneas. They get oxygen directly from the air. Our eyes can differentiate between 10 million different colors. 
the muscles that help our eyes focus on something make around 100,000 movements a day. If you wanted to make your leg muscles do the same amount of work, you'd need to take a long walk, at least 50 miles. We can't all see infrared light or ultraviolet radiation. Only 1% of us can do that. And if you can see one of those, it doesn't necessarily mean you can see the other. Research says blue-eyed people all over the world may be related, or at least share a very distant ancestor. Scientists looked at blue-eyed individuals from Turkey, India, Jordan, and Scandinavia. They all had the same eye color gene sequences. They believe this trait comes from one blue-eyed person whose genes mutated around 10,000 years ago. Before that, people's eyes were just all different shades of brown. People with blue eyes are generally a bit more sensitive to pain than individuals with other eye colors. We blink about 20 times in one minute, which means we do it more than 10 million times a year. That thing about being similar to sharks, well, that goes for our eyes, too. If part of your eye gets damaged, you can replace it with a shark's. We can't sneeze with our eyes open. Try it. It's really hard to override your built-in reflexes. Eyelashes have their own life, too. One single lash lives for about 150 days before falling out. We all get goosebumps when we hear good news, our favorite song, or when it's ridiculously cold in the frozen food aisle. It's a reflex we got from our ancestors. It happens when you release adrenaline. It makes your hair stand on end and helps you look more imposing. Rawr. Scary, huh? The human brain has 100 billion neurons and a memory capacity that's equal to more than 4 terabytes, which is a lot. Your brain uses more than a quarter of all the oxygen your lungs take in, and it's mostly water, more than 75%. Stay hydrated, people. It's not true that humans use only 10% of their brain. We use much more than that, even when we're asleep. Most of our brain is constantly active. We just don't use all parts of it at the same time. Out of all the species out there, humans are the only ones who can blush. It comes from a rush of adrenaline. When you see your face turn red, know that your stomach is turning red too. <laughs> How weird is that? When you crack your knuckles, the sound you're hearing is tiny gas bubbles being released. There are pockets of gas trapped between your joints. So when you stretch them, they make a popping noise. Oh, so satisfying. Ah. We use 43 muscles when we frown, but only 17 when we smile. No scientists are still arguing over this one. Say cheese. An average person eats around 33 tons of food over a lifetime. That's six elephants worth. We breathe in approximately 2,900 gallons of air on a daily basis, but we can't swallow and breathe at the same time. Most people need about seven minutes to fall asleep, and we're just about the only living creatures that sleep on our backs. Randy Gardner decided to set the record for the longest period without sleep. The year was 1964, and he stayed awake for 11 days. That's 264 hours. Guess he had pretty noisy neighbors. Amongst all animals, humans are the only ones with chins. When you're thirsty, it means the water loss you're experiencing is equal to 1% of your total body weight. If it goes past 5%, you might even faint. During your lifespan, your body goes from having 300 bones to 206. Over half of all your bones are in your feet, your ankles, hands, and wrists. The biggest human bone is the thigh bone, and the smallest one is called the stirrup bone. It's inside your eardrum. Your nose can recognize a trillion different scents and remember 50,000 of them. Also, women are better smellers than men, and our sense of smell is 10,000 times more sensitive than our sense of taste. Our lungs have a surface area that's almost equal to the area of an entire tennis court. So what's up with that feeling you get when you're going over a crest on a roller coaster and your stomach jumps up into your throat? Well, the seatbelt keeps your body in place, but your stomach, intestines, and smaller internal organs get a little airtime. It doesn't do you any harm, but your nerves can't figure out what's going on. They really think your stomach has jumped all the way into your throat. We're all taller in the morning because throughout the day, the cartilage between our bones gets compressed. 
That makes us around one fingernail shorter by the end of each day. Nose and ears, parts of our body that never stop growing. It's mostly thanks to gravity. The veins and arteries inside your body are long enough to make two trips around the world. Blood makes up about 8% of your body weight. When you listen to music, your heartbeat syncs with the general vibe of the song. So choose wisely. Your skin is the biggest organ you have. It counts for about 15% of your total weight. Get this, you can burn more calories during sleep than when watching TV. Hmm, then what about sleeping while the TV's still on? Okay, yes, it's possible to rotate your eyes, but you can't do it without some practice. Our eyes have four major muscles that allow them to move up and down and side to side. There are actually two more muscles that we use without knowing as well. These muscles help you roll or rotate your eyes. We can focus on something rotating, and our eyes will start rotating with it. This helps us have a stable image and keep a clear vision, like an autofocus on a camera. When you move your head side to side and up and down, your eyes will move in the opposite direction. The average human eye has three cones, which lets us see red, green, and blue spectrums of light. All combined, this gives us the ability to see around a million different colors. Tetrachromats see the ultraviolet shades as well, as they've got four cones in their eyes. Pause here to quickly test how many colors you can count. There were 39 colors there. If you counted a lot, you might be a tetrachromat. Some animals, like bats and dolphins, can see using echolocation. There are also humans that can do something similar called flash sonar. They can use clicking sounds to make a 3D image of an area in their minds, allowing them to easily navigate through it. The more they click, the more flashes they get about a room or an area, giving them a better understanding of the place. Being pitch perfect is astonishingly rare. Less than 1 in 10,000 people have it. It allows people to accurately identify musical notes of all kinds. One of the many advantages of this talent is that it allows people to listen to a song and immediately know what key it's in. Hey, without music, life would be flat. People with dystochiasis are born with a second set of eyelashes that grow from the inner layer of the eyelid. While it may look pretty to some, these extra lashes can irritate the eye and cause problems like sensitivity to light, droopy eyelids, tearing, and inflammation. There are a few ways to treat the condition, like soft contacts, lasers, and cryotherapy. Dutch health guru Wim Hof claims that his breathing, meditation, and training have helped him gain all kinds of superhuman abilities. He's trained his body to adapt to extreme temperatures and even learned how to raise his own body temperature. He's also been able to adapt more quickly to altitude changes. He has even claimed that his training methods and strict diet and exercise regimen have improved his immune system. Now, we're meant to get anywhere from 7 to 8 hours of sleep every night to function the next day. But there are some lucky people out there that only need 6 hours or less a night. This is caused by a genetic anomaly, and there don't seem to be any adverse effects from having it. We have about 10,000 taste buds. But some people have many more than that. Super tasters! Thanks to their powerful ability to taste sweet things like oranges, strawberries, and candy are almost too sweet, while bitter things like broccoli, cabbage, spinach, grapefruit, and coffee are overpowering. Well, thanks anyway, but I'll keep what I have. Most people have a total of 24 ribs. No, not at the restaurant. In your body. There's a chance you might be one of the few that has 25 ribs instead. About 1 in 200 people have a cervical rib, a spare rib just above the first rib. It's usually not even noticed because it's above the collarbone and pretty thin. Hey, when's lunch? I got hungry for some reason. Chances are you have an any belly button. That's because only about 10% of the world's population have an Audi, making it pretty rare. It has nothing to do with how our umbilical cord is cut. Our belly button stores a bit of fat beneath it, and it's this that determines what kind of belly button you'll end up with. So don't blame the doctor. The type you have is completely down to genetics. If you've ever experienced high altitude, you should know how hard it is on your body. Even just walking up a hill can be a difficult task. Give it a few days, though, and things will become easier. Your lungs, blood cells, and body will adapt quicker than you think, 
letting you hold on to that precious oxygen for longer. This adaptation will last for as long as you stay up high, and you'll go back to normal after a while back at normal altitude. When we submerge ourselves in water, it causes our heart rate to drop and oxygen consumption to slow. In recent years, free divers have pushed the limits of human lungs by going down a record of 700 feet. One person held his breath for more than 22 minutes underwater. We don't know what the limits are yet, but people are testing the boundaries. When a person has a photographic memory or total recall, this is called eidetic memory. It's the ability to accurately recall sounds, images, or other things from your memory. Some can even be told a date in a calendar from years ago and tell you what day it actually was. Unfortunately, you can't get an eidetic memory with practice. You have to be born with it. An ultramarathon runner named Dean Karnazes once ran for 350 consecutive miles and didn't even sleep for three days. He's most famous for running 50 marathons in all 50 U.S. states in 50 consecutive days. He finished this achievement off by completing the New York Marathon in only three hours. Some people have an incredible ability to find their way without using a compass or even the stars. This unique navigational ability has been linked to the strength of the signals given off in a certain part of the brain, called the entorenal region. Place the back of your wrist and forearm on a table, then squeeze your thumb and pinky together. Do you see a muscle raise up in the middle of your forearm? If you don't, don't worry, it's vestigial. That means that it doesn't do anything useful anymore. Hey wait, that's me. It's an old muscle that we used to use for climbing, and around 10% of the human population doesn't even have it anymore. If you can wiggle your ears, you can thank your auricular muscles. Those are the ones on the outside of your ear. Even if you can't wiggle your ears, the muscles are still there. Compared to other mammals, our ears can't move much. Some mammals can even fully turn their ears to locate sounds. Just watch your dog or cat. A dog's third eyelid might be a bit creepy the first time you see it, but we also have a third eyelid of sorts. But this human body part can't move by itself. It just covers a tiny part of the inside corner of your eye. It's likely that it used to serve a purpose, but it's pretty much useless now. Sometimes, you just need a really good cry. It's also good for you, too. Shedding tears when you cry helps release your stress hormones. It can also stimulate the production of endorphins as well, our body's natural answer to aspirin. Your brain replaces itself every two months, your liver every six weeks, your epidermis or the skin every month. Even your stomach lining replaces itself every few days. If your body didn't do this, the acids inside of your stomach wouldn't just digest food, they'd also start digesting you. So, alright, what's eating you? Oh, you. The human lungs contain around 1,500 miles of airways and a total surface area of about 754 square feet when laid flat. But I would suggest that you don't do that. Your lungs are on the clock 24-7, keeping you alive and breathing, taking 12 to 15 breaths a minute or about 17,000 a day. Your left lung is slightly smaller than your right lung to make room for your big heart. After years of wear and tear, your feet may weaken enough that they seem to grow. This can cause our arches to flatten, meaning broader and longer feet eventually. It won't happen to everyone, but people who get swollen feet or ankles are more prone. If it does happen to you, you've got time. By age 70 or 80, your feet would have only gone up one size. Taste is influenced a lot by the temperature of what you're eating or drinking. For example, hot coffee seems less bitter and tastes much better because the heat tricks our bitter-detecting taste buds. The same goes for cold coffee, too. The cold masks the bitterness flavor and creates a more pleasant aftertaste. Room-temperature coffee doesn't smell the same or taste nice because the bitterness comes on more strongly. Brushing your teeth too aggressively is very possible, and it's not good for your teeth at all. It'll wear down the enamel and make them sensitive to hot and cold foods. Teeth don't repair themselves, so you gotta take care of them. Slow down your brushing and take a full two minutes to get your teeth properly clean. Um, don't forget the floss, too. Whenever we yawn, we use the muscles in our mouth and tongue, and the contact can squeeze some of the saliva-producing glands. As a result, we might squirt a tiny stream of saliva without even noticing it. 
but it'll reach out a foot or more. I had a friend in college who could do that at will. It was impressive. It turns out that saliva is basically filtered blood. Blood is processed thanks to special glands, and special cells absorb its properties. After that, the blood becomes saliva. Moving on, if your brain were a USB drive, it would be totally insane. Our brain capacity is somewhere between 10 and 100 terabytes. Some scientists claim the full spectrum can reach 2.5 petabytes. Sounds like a dog snack, doesn't it? When the size of the full English version of Wikipedia was calculated back in 2010, it was only 5.6 terabytes. Our body heat can boil a half a gallon of water in 30 minutes, even when we're idle. Yeah, we should try that. Our brain can perform up to 10 quadrillion operations per second with 10 watts of power only. A computer that could do the same would need about 1 gigawatt of power. This amount could power up to 300,000 houses. Your memory is affected by your body position. For example, you're much more likely to recall a situation where you wave to someone if you stand and wave again. Your brain has millions of neurons. They're all different, and the speed of connection between them is different too. That's why you can recall some information faster than others. Our nerve impulses, though, are super slow compared to the speed of electricity. Neurons can speed up to 275 miles per hour, even slower than the world's fastest car. Still, it's pretty fast because your brain needs to respond to stuff like pain or tickles. The brain itself, by the way, can't feel pain. It has no nerve endings of its own. People with red-colored hair are 1% of all people. 2% are natural blondes. So yeah, most people you see with these hair colors have dyed hair. Black is the most common hair color in the world. Hair is not only strong, but also elastic. It can stretch about 30% of its length when it's wet. The average hair growth rate is 6 inches per year. So if you never cut your hair until you're, say, 80 years old, your hair will have grown up to 480 inches, about the height of a four-story building. Still, it's not quite possible because our hair length is programmed genetically. A human eye resembles a car engine. Both of them need liquid for good lubrication. The engine needs oil, and the eye needs tears. To make sure the eyes work right, tears are distributed all over them. That's why we blink more than 10,000 times a day. The eye muscle is the fastest muscle in our bodies. We can blink 5 times per second and even more. We spend about 6 seconds blinking every minute. During the day, we spend 30 minutes in complete darkness just because we close the eyes, not even including the time when we sleep. The only part of the human body that doesn't get any nutrients from blood is the cornea of the eye. The only thing it needs to work well are tears and fluid in front of your eyes. Most scientists agree that tears that appear out of emotion are a unique human feature. No other animal is capable of crying because of sadness or joy. The pupils narrow and expand in order to control the incoming light. If there's a lot of light, they narrow the passage for light so as to not harm the vision. In the dark, the pupils expand to capture as much light as possible. Now, back to our mouths. The tongue has a lot of muscles, and some of them constrain only when you're learning a new language. A human bite almost always becomes infected because of all the bacteria that live in our mouth. In this sense, we're quite close to hyenas. Your bones are designed to be used a lot daily, and some of them can absorb two or even three times your body weight. That's impressive, but your teeth are even stronger. When you bite something, the teeth can exert incredible pressure, up to 200 pounds. By the way, the enamel is considered to be a part of your skeletal system. Our body is about 60% water, and it can be found even in bones. About 25% of the human bone mass is made of water. Hydrochloric acid in our stomach, 
also known as the most important defender of the immune system, helps get rid of dangerous food toxins, viruses, and bacteria you get with the food you eat. Even the stomach itself can be digested by this acid, but the mucous membrane protects it. Even if you brush your teeth twice a day and never forget about mouthwash, your mouth still stays one of the dirtiest parts of the human body. Ooh. Millions of bacteria live inside it. The good news is that most of these bacteria are good for the body and protect it from bad bacteria and viruses. People and giraffes have similar necks. A person has the same amount of neck vertebrae as a giraffe has. The difference, though, is about the length. Giraffe vertebrae are about 10 inches long. Our spine can withstand pressure of up to 1,000 pounds. It would withstand an adult zebra. But please, don't try it at home. There are no zebras there, after all. When you lie down on your back and elevate the knees, the pressure on your spine is about 25 pounds. Not a zebra for sure, but a good-sized cat. Our spine is also very flexible. If we could bend it, it could possibly form two-thirds of a complete circle. Are we like snakes, then? In the morning, you're taller than in the evening. While sleeping, you're no longer affected by the force of gravity. And your spine stretches, giving you up to half an inch in height. Too bad you become shorter by daytime, though. A roller coaster actually tosses your organs around. So when you feel like your stomach's falling down, it's actually flipping inside your body. You think your fingerprints are the only unique thing in your body? Well, they're not. Your tongue print and your smell are also one of a kind. If anyone sniffs you, it's reason enough to get suspicious. If all of your blood vessels were stretched into a single line, boy, that would hurt. But it would go around the Earth more than twice. An impressive feat that you wouldn't see because, well, you can't live without your blood vessels. You think you rest while you're asleep, but in fact, your brain doesn't. It's actually more active at night than during the day, processing all the info you've collected. So have some respect. The human liver is the busiest organ of the body. It has over 500 functions, and not all of them are even clear to the scientists. Ever wonder why you feel so sleepy after lunch? Well, that's because of your circadian rhythms, which have 24-hour cycles, demand you have a nap after 7 hours of being awake, and food just adds to this effect. Simple. Toothache and headache are linked together thanks to the trigeminal nerve. It goes through the jaw right to the head, so when you feel tooth pain, it usually goes hand-in-hand with that in your head. You lose calories doing literally anything. A healthy 8-hour sleep, for example, makes you lose up to 800 calories. And yes, you spend energy even while eating. Like all mammals, we have a diving reflex that slows down or even stops some bodily functions to keep us from drowning. That refers to heart rate, too. A person can go without food for more than 20 days. However, if you don't sleep for 10 days, your body will simply stop functioning. Talking about sleep, the average person forgets 90% of their dreams. And maybe that's a good thing. Otherwise, imagine how crazy the world would have been. The color of your dreams is affected by the TV you watched as a kid. If you're of an older generation that watch black and white TV, you'll see monochrome dreams more often than not. If you're used to color television, your dreams will also be colorful. Out of every 10,000 people on Earth, one person has their organs mirrored or reversed from their usual and customary positions. That is, their liver would be larger on the left side and the right kidney would be a bit superior to the left one. Speaking of kidneys, your left one is a bit more elevated than your right. That's because the liver is larger on the right side of your body. People with light-colored eyes, blue or green, are better at tolerating pain than those with dark eyes. Scientists think it might be related to melanin that affects the color of the eyes. The length of your foot is similar to that of your forearm. Don't believe me? Go check! I'll wait right here. Nah. 
Well, here's some facts you'll find hard to digest. <laughs> Your stomach has a pretty incredible capacity. Being able to hold up to half a gallon of liquids. That's a whole large bottle of Coke. It's pretty hard to estimate how much hard food you can eat because it's processed with your teeth before it gets to your stomach. There's definitely not enough room for a turkey, but a good-sized chicken would probably fit in it. If you were asked where your stomach was, you would probably point to your tummy. Sorry, that's wrong. It's actually up here, hidden in between your ribs. Scientists believe that the appendix will disappear eventually. Nobody really knows why we need it, but some researchers claim it might have existed to help our ancestors digest tree bark. Because it's no longer part of our daily diet, the appendix isn't necessary and can disappear from our bodies without any consequences. The appendix isn't the only obsolete part of our body. Wisdom teeth aren't that useful either. Yeah, they used to come in handy whenever our ancestors lost some of their teeth, but the only thing they help us lose now is the money we spend extracting them. Almost all of our body is covered with hairs, even if we don't notice them. They grow even in the belly button. Their purpose is to catch lint. Check it out. See? Your liver acts as your own personal bodyguard, protecting you from toxins and many other things you don't want hanging around in your body. It's also pretty indestructible and can even regenerate. Only about 43% of you is actually you. Over 50% of the cells in your body belong to tiny little creatures that mainly live in your gut. Still, even though your own cells are fewer than microbial ones, there are, on average, about 100 trillion of them in you. See? You're not alone. With this in mind, your own genes are less than half of what you really consist of. If you take all the microbes dwelling within your body and count their genes, you'll find between 2 to 20 million. If you sleep, it doesn't mean all of your body sleeps. In fact, sometimes your brain has to work even harder when you're asleep. It needs to process tons of information, and reports usually take a lot of time. The nose definitely gets a good rest while you're sleeping. Amazingly, your sense of smell basically deactivates at night. You wouldn't even be bothered if there was a really terrible smell in your bedroom. No comment. The nose is probably one of the most underappreciated parts of the body. We wouldn't even be able to enjoy eating without it. About 80% of the taste of any food is thanks to the nose and its ability to recognize odors. If you hold your nose while eating, you will taste almost nothing. With no sense of smell, you're likely to recognize food mostly by texture. So an onion might seem no different than a big refreshing apple. Yeah, try that and leave me a comment on how that goes. Scientists used to believe we could distinguish about 10,000 smells, but they were wrong. Recent research showed that people are actually able to distinguish between more than a trillion smells. We also remember them better than anything else, and smells can even evoke some distant memories. Your nose just doesn't help you breathe and catch odors. It filters the air for sensitive throats and lungs. If we inhale dry air, the nose moistens it, cools it, and heats it if it's necessary. Also, the nose cleans the air of dirt. When you age, your brain is gradually reducing in size. By age 75, it's much smaller than at 30, and it starts shrinking by the age of 40. It happens to everyone and doesn't affect your mental strength in any way. Our brain can store only 7 bits in its short-term memory. Don't even try to compare your brain with a phone capacity, not even the one you had back in 2005. That's why you can't even learn a phone number by heart. Our short-term memory functions just like a chalkboard. You can get some information, but sooner or later, you run out of space. To check your working memory capacity, try this test. Ask a friend to write a list of 10 words and read it to you. Most people recall 7 or fewer items from that list. Your RAM, or working memory, is an essential thing that we need to perform almost any everyday activity including basic conversations, surfing the net, and even petting your dog. Our strongest and emotional memories are often fake. 
The central memory gives us the confidence to believe that we remember everything, even though most of the details are made up in our heads. Not only your brain shrinks as you get older, you too shrink dramatically. The bones get more brittle, the backbone gets compressed. A similar thing happens when you rest at night. Your bones kind of relax too. Because of this, you wake up taller in the mornings than you are at the end of the day. Among mammals, only humans can walk on two legs for their entire lives. You might think that kangaroos or gorillas move in the same way, but kangaroos use their tail as a third leg, and gorillas use their long arms to keep balance. Your bones take part in metabolism too. Since they mostly consist of calcium, when there's not enough of this element in your blood, bones start shedding it into the bloodstream, balancing your body. The same reaction works in reverse, too. When there's too much calcium in your blood, it goes into the bones to be stored for later. The only bone to have a sense of humor in your body is inside your upper arm. That's why it's called the humerus. Okay, I made that one up. Moving along. The only bones that never grow are found in our ears. We can hear thanks to these tiny bones because they have adapted to transmit sound vibrations. Doctors call them the oscular chain. One of these hearing bones, the stapes, is the smallest bone in your entire body. It's no larger than a grain of rice. Our height, shape of our body, and skin color depend a lot on where our ancestors used to live. But we can adapt to new conditions even within our own lifespan. For example, if you move from plains to the mountains, you'll eventually develop more red blood cells to compensate for the lack of oxygen. And naturally, if you move from a colder climate to a hotter and sunnier one, your skin will get darker to adapt. Our lifespan is programmed within ourselves. They constantly renew and divide, but they have a sort of internal timer that stops at some point. Some cells also stop reproducing sooner than others. On average, cells cease dividing when we reach the age of 100. That means, if we could find a way to trick ourselves into turning off the timer, we could potentially live forever. Body fat isn't just a nuisance. It acts as insulation material, energy reserve, and shock absorber. Your body sends the most fat into your waist region, because that's where your internal organs are. If something happens to you, this layer of fat might protect your vitals from irreparable damage. Heads up! Your skull isn't a single bone. It actually consists of 28 different bones, many of which are fused together to protect your brain. The mandible, or the lower jaw, is the only skull bone that isn't fixed to the bone around it. It's attached with connective tissues and muscles. This is what makes it so mobile. You can move it in any direction you like. Hey, you can actually masticate with your mandible, another word for chewing. You see, the strongest muscles in your body aren't in your arms or legs, they're in your head. The masseter is the main muscle responsible for chewing, and it needs to be the strongest for you to eat normally. And you know those muscles that allow you to move your ears? Those are temporalis, located above your temples. They also help you chew your food. Now, we've got two really fast muscles. They control the eyelid closing. In fact, they're the fastest muscles in our body. Eyes are fragile and need protection, so the reflex that protects them needs to be as fast as lightning. These muscles can shut the eyelids in less than a tenth of a second. People with double-jointed thumbs can bend them backward. It looks super unusual, and very few people can do it. Still, it's totally okay. Even though it looks painful, it actually doesn't hurt at all for someone with a double-jointed thumb. Now, we recognize only purple-blue, green-yellow, and yellow-red colors. Everything else is a combination of these three. It's impossible to calculate how many of these combinations the human eye sees, because every single person has slight vision differences. But it's about 1 million combinations on average. You see? Most people have 12 pairs of rib bones, which means 24 ribs in total. But some have 25. One in 200 people is born with the so-called cervical rib. It forms right above the first rib and grows at the base of a person's neck, above the collarbone. 
A cervical rib can be located on the left, right, or both sides. You can have it without even knowing about it. This extra rib doesn't necessarily form completely. It can be just a thin strand of tissue fibers not even an x-ray can see. In most cases, it's really not a big deal, unless it starts putting pressure on nerves and blood vessels. You probably don't think that much when you're filling out a form and come across the eye color section. But it's not that simple for people who have this rare body feature called heterochromia. That's when a person has a difference in eye color. Complete heterochromia means you have two different colored eyes, like one blue and one brown eye. But there's also partial heterochromia. It means only a part of your iris is a different color from the rest. In the US, fewer than 200,000 people have it. Natural red hair is not as common as you might think. Only 2% of the world's population has it. There are eight genes responsible for it. Scientists used to link it with just one rare and recessive gene, MC1R, that you had to inherit in two versions from both of your parents. Then, they realized not every person with two red-haired versions got red hair. So, there have to be some other genes involved. Do you know which hmm. eye color is super rare? Gray. Most people have either brown, blue, or hazel eyes. About 17% of people have blue eyes, but the odds of getting those and red hair at the same time are just around 0.17%. Less than 1% have gray eyes. If you have gray eyes, it's because of a low level of melanin in the front layer of your iris. There are just 43 people in the world that have this extremely rare body feature called golden blood. About 0.6% of Americans are AB negative, but this is still not the rarest type in the world. In 1961, scientists discovered there's an indigenous Australian with a specific blood type, the type that completely lacks certain antigens, RH, which means proteins or red blood cells. Those who have that exclusive type can donate to others with rare blood types, but can receive it only from one of those other 40-ish people who have it. That's why it's golden blood. It's worth its weight in gold. Another rare body feature is a small hole near the ear, pre-auricular pit. At first, it seems like some sort of a gill. Some scientists have a theory it could be some sort of evolutionary remains from times when we were aquatic creatures. This tiny hole is mostly present near one ear, not both. Some people have chimp-like feet. They're bendy, flexible, and adapted for climbing trees. Researchers at Boston University filmed 400 people walking barefoot and concluded that one in 13, or 8% of the participants, had this feature. Typically, the human foot is rigid. We've evolved that way so we can efficiently walk on even terrains. At least, that's something you could learn from textbooks. But other apes have flexible feet. This allows them to grasp branches as they move through the trees. The kind of foot that's similar to tree-dwelling apes is flexible at the middle. It bends at the ball of the foot and is halfway between the ball and the heel. Human feet normally have a joint at this point, but the majority of people have stiff ligaments that span the joint. That's how they keep it rigid. Those rare people with chimp-like feet have softer ligaments that allow their midfoot to bend. Try to move your middle finger or your pinky. It's hard to do without bending your ring finger, right? Well, that's how it works for most people. But there are some who can completely isolate their ring finger. Researchers believe it's hereditary. If you can touch your nose or chin with your tongue, it means you stand with around 5% of the world's population that can do that. Most people's tongues won't reach that far out, no matter how hard they try. Some women have super color vision. With this, you're able to see and distinguish colors thanks to special cells in your eyes called cones. People usually have three types of cones, but scientists are especially interested in tetrachromats. They believe these people have four types of cones. Thanks to that, they're able to see 100 million different colors. One research team from Newcastle University spent years searching for such people. Finally, in 2010, they found one of them. It sounds like a magic power at first, but it's not always fun. One tetrachromat said going to the grocery store can be a real nightmare because it's like seeing a trash pile of colors coming in at every angle. There are people born with a double row of eyelashes, a condition known as dystochiasis. 
that extra row emerges from the ducts of meibomian glands. One of the celebrity examples for such a rare genetic mutation was Elizabeth Taylor. Here's something you can try. Move your right foot off the ground. Go in a clockwise direction. Can you draw the number six with your big toe? No pencil or paper allowed, just your toe. The majority of people will soon notice they've started moving their foot in the opposite direction without even realizing it. This partially happens because the number features a counterclockwise circle. Only in some rare cases, when either the brain is wired in a different way or thanks to practicing, can some people do it the other way around. You've probably also heard that myth that it's not possible to sneeze with your eyes open. Well, it is. There are cranial nerves that link your eyes and your nose. That's the reason why, when sneezing, most people automatically close their eyes. But it's still possible to sneeze with your eyes open. And nope, your eyes won't pop out because of it. There are people who can make a roaring noise in their heads. All they have to do is tense their ears or jaws. We all have this small muscle in our ear, the tensor tympani. Its role is to silence certain sounds that can really distract you. For example, when you're chewing. And some have the ability to flex that tiny muscle. That way, they create an audible rumble, like there's a small lion roaring inside their head. Can you bend your thumb backward? If so, you must have something called hitchhiker's thumb. It's a double-jointed thumb that allows them to bend it backwards. There's no risk in doing this, and it's not something very uncomfortable for them. It's possible thanks to distal joints within the thumb. In some cases, people can move only one thumb backward, while others can move both. There's a rare body feature that turns some people into super tasters. Genetics plays a role in many things, including our taste buds. Approximately 25% of the world's population is in the category of super tasters. Compared to regular tasters, they have more visible tiny dots on their tongue, called taste papillae. It makes them more sensitive to certain tastes, like those that are sweet, bitter, and salty. They have more pain receptors than average, which is why they're not that into spicy food. Also, they most likely won't eat that many vegetables, since the taste will be too bitter to them. Wisdom teeth used to be important once, and we don't quite need them anymore, but their absence is actually a pretty rare body feature. These days, when wisdom teeth, also known as third molars, try to break through the gums, in many cases, they run out of space. As a result, it can get overcrowded inside your mouth, so many people have to get rid of those extra teeth. About 5 million people every year, to be precise. Synesthesia is the phenomenon when a brain mixes up certain senses. So, a person with synesthesia is able to taste music or hear colors. People say Mozart had it. For instance, he'd see D major as a warm, orangey sound, and B flat minor as blackish. This condition is rare. Approximately 1 in 2,000 people have it, and the majority of those are left-handed or women. Imagine you can recall what you were having for breakfast 15 years ago, like it was yesterday. Sure, you keep some special memories, but there are people that can recall everything that has happened to them <laughs> till now, as clearly as they recall things from this morning. If you give them a certain date, they'll be able to tell you what they did and where they were in the slightest detail. It's called Highly Superior Autobiographical Memory, HSAM, or Hyperthemesia, and only 60 people on the planet have it. Ay ay ay! About 6% of people can vibrate and rapidly shake their eyeballs back and forth. It doesn't mean something's not right with their eyes, it's just a unique trick they can perform. Good at parties, I suppose. Your bones are designed to be used a lot daily, and some of them can absorb two or even three times your body weight. That's impressive, but your teeth are even stronger. When you bite something, the teeth can exert incredible pressure, up to 200 pounds. By the way, the enamel is considered to be part of your skeletal system. Your stomach has a pretty incredible capacity, being able to hold up to half a gallon of liquid, a whole large bottle of Coke. It's pretty hard to estimate how much hard food you can squeeze into your stomach, since the food is processed with your teeth before it gets inside. There's definitely not enough room for a turkey, but a good-sized chicken will probably fit it. Whenever you rotate your hand, the bones inside it actually intersect. Grab your hand and verify it. Yeah, not very useful. Now, show me where your stomach is. If you're pointing at your tummy, sorry, but it's wrong. It's up here, hidden between your ribs. 
Fun fact about bones. You know that your body is about 60% water, right? What's new here is that your bones are in this too. About 25% of the human bone mass is made up of water. Scientists believe that the appendix isn't here to stay. Nobody really knows why we need it, but some researchers claim it helped our ancestors process the tree bark they were eating. As it's no longer part of our daily diet, the appendix can disappear from our bodies without any consequences. A human eye has some resemblance to a car engine. They both need various liquids to perform properly. An engine needs gasoline, and an eye needs tears. In order to work well, the tears should be thoroughly distributed all over the eye. That's why we blink up to 20,000 times a day. So a lid is a bit of a windshield washer. Almost all of our body is covered with hairs, even if we don't notice them. They grow even in the belly button. Their purpose is to catch lint. The only part of the human body that doesn't get any nutrients from blood is the cornea of the eye. Instead, it's fed by tears and fluid in the front of your eyes. If you never knew you had a personal bodyguard, look deeper. Your liver is your security guard, protecting you from toxins and many other things you don't want to have. It's also pretty indestructible and can even regenerate. When you blush, it means there's an increased blood flow in your body. Not only do your cheeks get somewhat red, but your stomach lining too. It's because it has plenty of blood vessels, and when there's more blood than usual, it turns red. Only about 43% of you is actually you. You're over 50% tiny little creatures that mainly live in your gut and other body parts without ever leaving it. Still, even though your own cells are fewer than microbial ones, there are, on average, about 100 trillion of them in you. Let's count them. You start. Your stomach has a lining replaced every 3-4 to four days. That's done to stop it from eating itself. The digestive acids we've got can be pretty damaging. One thing that surely rests while you're sleeping is your nose. You just won't smell anything nasty in your sleep. The thing is that your sense of smell basically deactivates at night. If there's some really terrible smell in your bedroom, you won't even be bothered. We can accidentally digest small objects, such as plastic items, glass, coins, and many other small objects. They pass their way through the digestive tract within 48 hours. Really, just trust me on this one. You have better things to do. Scientists used to believe we could distinguish about 10,000 smells. Nope. Recent research showed that people were able to distinguish more than a trillion smells. We also remember them better than anything else, and smells can even evoke some distant memories. We can digest tiny quantities of plastic, but the human digestive system can't really bear grass. Grazing animals have special teeth and several stomachs to process raw leaves and grass, while we have none of that stuff. But don't feel bad. Among mammals, only humans can always walk on two hind limbs and keep that posture for their entire lives. You might object that kangaroos or gorillas move in the same way, but the roos use their tail as a third leg, and gorillas use the help of their long arms to keep balance. The stomach is the most important defender of the immune system. Hydrochloric acid in our stomach kills dangerous food toxins, viruses, and bacteria that get in there with the food you eat. This acid can digest even the stomach itself, but the mucous membrane protects it. Body fat isn't just a nuisance. It acts as insulation material, energy reserve, and shock absorber. Your body sends the most fat into your waist region because that's where your internal organs are. If something happens to you, this layer of fat might as well protect your vitals from irreparable damage. We've got two really fast muscles. They control the eyelid closing. These are the fastest muscles in our body. Eyes are fragile and need protection. That's why, when the reflex is triggered, these muscles shut the eyes within about 100 milliseconds. That's not more than 0.1 second. We recognize only purple-blue, green-yellow, and yellow-red colors. Everything else is a combination of these three. It's impossible to calculate how many of these combinations the human eye sees because every person has slight visual differences. But it's about 1 million combinations on average. Now, even if you brush your teeth twice a day and never forget about mouthwash, your mouth still stays one of the dirtiest parts of the human body. Ew. Millions of bacteria live inside it. The good news is that most of these bacteria are good for the body and protected from bad bacteria and viruses. The second dirtiest place is the belly button, and it's probably because it's the first ignored place. The thing is, 
we don't really use them after we're born. So this forlorn area accumulates all kinds of germs, sweat, and dirt. The belly button has over 2,300 bacterial species, and it does need extra attention. You think you owe your strong handshake to all your strength workouts? Well, you're more likely to owe it to your pinky. (laughs) Just kidding. Anyway, a pinky is the strongest finger out there. This humble finger is responsible for 50% of your hand strength. Still, the most used finger is the thumb. It takes to itself 40% of the hand's action. Well, it probably makes it the most important finger, too. Two more humble helpers are your toes that carry about 40% of your weight. If you've ever heard that humans don't really need their toes, don't believe it. They're also the main pushers when you walk. Tomatoes have more genes than humans. This shouldn't concern you, though, because it's not the number of genes that matters, but the complexity of their connections. Nails don't only help us catch random objects and peel the stickers off. If you didn't have a rigid structure against which to press, you wouldn't be able to judge how firmly to hold anything. Our hair color is easily explained by genes. There are not more than 2% of people with naturally red hair. They're followed by blondes, about 3%, and all the varieties of brown shades, only about 11%. The vast majority goes to black hair, including very dark brown. Yeah, your hair can stop growing at a certain length. A hair usually grows from 2 to 7 years, so usually it doesn't exceed 42 inches. Well, tell that to this gal from China who broke all the hair records with the longest hair ever. In 2004, her hair was 18 feet 5 and a half inches long. Rapunzel, where have you been, girl? When we laugh, think, look at something, dream, move, or do some other activity with our body, Small electrical and chemical signals run between neurons along those connections. Our brain is always active, sometimes even more when we're sleeping than when we're awake. And by that, neurons make and send more information than all the phones in the whole world. You're sitting somewhere outside, and an insect lands on your leg. Your skin has sensory neurons, and they quickly send the message to your brain at an impressive speed, 150 miles per hour. The brain sends back the message to your leg to shake the insect off very fast. And the speed that information travels is even bigger, 200 miles per hour. Now, toenails grow around four times slower than your fingernails. This happens because we do more things with our hands compared to feet, which is why we cause more trauma to our fingernails. Now, there's a high possibility your right hand has different types of microbes than the left one. This happens because they cover our skin from head to toe and their variety depends on our skin thickness, humidity, temperature, texture, and chemistry, which can change as we use our right and left hands in different ways. Our nails and hair are made of keratin, which is a material we find in certain body parts of some other animals as well. For instance, claws, hooves, horns, wool, fur, feathers, beaks, turtle shells, and porcupine quills. Our body is made of stardust. Really? The more complex elements in our body can only come about through supernovas. The first stars were just gassy lumps that were drawn together and, at some point, started the process of combustion. This finally led to a nuclear reaction in its center. Stars that were there right after the Big Bang were over 50 times bigger than our Sun is now. Inside of them, there was a constant process of making the elements, and those large stars were burning their fuel faster. Most of the elements in the human body were formed in those stars over billions of years. So you could realistically say that part of you is immortal. Cool, huh? Now, men and women might seem like completely different species sometimes. What's that old saying? Men are from Mars, women are from Venus? But let's face it, we all come in a variety of different shapes and sizes, with different personalities, tastes, and even hair colors. There's certainly no competition, we're all amazing in our own unique way. But there's no denying those inherent biological differences between male and female bodies. When it comes to men, we may not be from a different planet, as far as we know. But there's a lot about the male body that may surprise even you fellas out there. So put on your doctor's coat and get your stethoscope ready to examine some unknown facts about the male body. Testosterone is one of the key factors for physical attributes considered uniquely male. 
This includes markedly higher hair growth on men's bodies, for example, on their chests and faces. Something less noticeable, though, is the thickness of their skin, and we're speaking in the literal sense. Thanks to higher levels of testosterone, men, on average, have skin that is 20-25% to thicker than women's skin. More specifically, the deeper layer of our skin called the dermis. This results in men having overall tougher skin with a rougher texture. This doesn't necessarily mean it's completely advantageous, though. In fact, men experience collagen loss at a more consistent rate than women do, at least in their younger years. That collagen loss results in the skin thinning, sagging, and becoming more prone to wrinkles. So, the older men get, the thinner their skin becomes. At the same time, men's thicker skin does stave off signs of aging for longer. So, there are definitely pros as much as there are cons. While women show signs of aging sooner, the physical aging process for men, when it does happen, is faster, and the wrinkles are fully grooved. Think of your skin as a rubber eraser. The thicker the eraser, the longer it will last. But when wear and cracks start to appear, they are more pronounced. A smart approach to skin care can help preserve smooth and healthy skin, and more importantly, regular application of sunscreen, even when you're indoors. Now, is it just me or has it gotten a little hot in here? You've probably debated with your friends or family members over the temperature in the room, whether to turn the AC up or down or keep the fan running. Most of the time, the men in the room are likely feeling a little too warm. And though the feeling may not be unanimous, it doesn't mean they're wrong. The main cold receptors in the male skin are kind of desensitized. This doesn't mean that men are biologically built to live in the middle of the Arctic, but their tolerance to cold temperatures is definitely higher. There's also a big difference in the circulatory system when body temperature is concerned. While women have a higher core temperature and are susceptible to sudden shifts in the ambient temperature, the core temperature in men is less affected. That's why temperature changes often go unnoticed. The room temperature is not the only matter in which men and women don't see eye to eye. So let's look at eyes. Men see a smaller range of colors than women. So where men might see basic blue, women will likely see more subtle gradation, like lavender blue. At the same time, men have a better eye for distant moving objects. So the difference between how men and women see the world extends beyond color. Studies suggest that the physiological cause of this variation in gender optics is, once again, testosterone. Men have more testosterone receptors than women, which leads to a different organization in the neurons in the visual cortex. One theory as to why lies in evolution, specifically that of our hunter-gatherer ancestors. It's possible that long-sightedness benefited males in distinguishing prey and predators from afar. At the same time, women may have developed a more distinct close-range visual palette for foraging and gathering. Nowadays, though hunter-gatherer practices are less common, men can still spot their favorite restaurant from a distance as they're driving past. So, have times really changed all that much? To help chow down on their favorite meal, men also have larger teeth. Well, what is considered to be masculine or feminine as far as teeth are concerned is entirely up to perspective. Men tend to have a sizable advantage. This is particularly noticeable in the incisors and canines, which are wider in diameter and sharper. This means that the typical male smile is full of bulkier and squarer chompers. Hmm? The answer for this may once again be found in evolutionary physiology. Our primitive ancestors had a quite confrontational hierarchy, meaning that males needed to assert their dominance. Much like modern apes, it's possible those males bared their fangs to intimidate other males and potential threats. Larger canines were a sign of a more formidable individual. While you might not find such behavior among modern men, our larger teeth can account for wider jawlines, often considered a feature associated with masculinity. On the contrary, a display of big pearly whites is often a sign of joy. Say cheese! <laughs> larger teeth aren't the only unique masculine trait that has to do with the mouth. I'm talking about that less-than-elegant snorting and rattling noise that can occur when some people sleep. While snoring is attributed to both men and women, almost twice as many men are prone to snoring. 
Sleep studies show that every 4 in 10 men are likely to be habitual snorers. That's 40% of men compared to 24% of women. While there's a multitude of causes for habitual snoring, male biology is the main culprit behind these statistics. By biological design, most men have large upper airways and lower hanging larynxes. This results in a large space in the back of their throat where snores are amplified. Men also tend to have more abdominal body fat, likely due to a higher intake of carbs. Carrying more weight, especially in the neck, chest, and thorax, puts more pressure on the airways, effectively increasing the risk of snoring. Though your partner may not appreciate it, in most cases, snoring is relatively harmless. However, it can also be an indication of an underlying health problem, so it's worth looking into. Now, have you ever wondered why men typically have deeper vocals? I mean, deeper vocals. This naturally has to do with the throat. A larger size of the male larynx contributes to another unique feature of the male body, the Adam's apple. This lump of cartilage that sticks out from the throat is formed as the larynx grows behind it, pushing it outward. By the way, some females with a larger-than-average larynx can also develop an Adam's apple. The inherent difference, however, remains in the sound of our voices. The larynx is what produces our voice. A larger larynx creates deeper and louder sounds as there is more room for vibrations to resonate. And since the size of the Adam's apple depends on the size of the larynx behind, a larger Adam's apple can also mean a deeper voice. The cartilage that is the Adam's apple acts as a shield to protect the larynx from injury. Beyond that, it serves no individual function. Now, we wouldn't recommend a musical duet with someone who has a larger Adam's apple. Chances are, they'll have a hard time projecting above their pitch. Now, while we're up around the face, let's take a look at the eyelashes. Did you know that men have a higher hereditary chance of growing longer and thicker lashes? Primarily, eyelashes serve as eye protection against various elements. Besides, they're considered an attractive facial feature. So, we're sorry ladies, men win this round most of the time. But why are men more likely to have longer eyelashes? Well, it all goes back to that common cause for most uniquely male features, testosterone. As I mentioned before, men have higher levels of testosterone, which affects their body hair growth. This includes eyelashes. It also goes back to their primary function. Your eyelashes are a form of protection. They help keep your eyes moisturized, preventing them from becoming dry and irritated. They also shield them from harmful airborne particles, such as dirt and dust. So, eyelashes are one of your body's few features which combines fashion and function. For all our biological differences, there's actually something in common between men and women, more than you might think. For starters, it's time to stop thinking of dramatic hormonal changes as exclusively feminine. And while women are fully aware of the challenges their bodies face when these changes occur, men are more ignorant of it. It might not be as frequent as on a monthly basis, but around 26% of men experience these regular hormonal shifts. Though the biological cause may be completely different, the symptoms can be remarkably similar. The reason for these shifts has to do with, yep, yeah, that's right, testosterone. Men's testosterone levels tend to spike and then drop, depending on the season of the year. When these fluctuations happen, this can result in side effects, such as fatigue, cramps, increased sensitivity, irritability, and mood swings. Mood swings? Ha! <laughs> well, yeah, most of us experience this. So we should all be more understanding of one another when those around us are experiencing hormonal changes for themselves. Here's a young man in a business suit. He's got a secret. He's in the bathroom, standing in front of the mirror, washing his face with cold water to cheer up. There's no one else here besides him, but he's not alone. The guy looks nervous. He slaps his cheeks, looks in the mirror, and says, Don't worry, we can deal with it. We've been going to this for so long, we will win. He said we, not because he has a split personality. And no, he's not talking to someone else through a small microphone. He said we, because he knows a secret. Technically, he's not all human, but a group of billions of living creatures. 
Him, you, and all the people on Earth aren't really who they think they are. Only 43% of your body is made up of human cells. The remaining 57% are microbes and bacteria. Now this guy is going on stage to tell us this secret. Get on the scales. See the number? Now subtract a little more than half from it. This is your actual weight. Everything else is microscopic organisms. It's hard to believe because, in this case, your body should constantly change its shape, disintegrating into tiny particles. You would see your skin pulsating and continually moving. Fortunately, this doesn't happen for two reasons. Firstly, microbes are tiny. Their movements aren't visible. Secondly, most of this microbial world is in a dark place we can't see. A place without access to oxygen. In our intestines. It's where billions of little creatures are roaming. Feeling kind of crowded, huh? Some of them appeared before we were born. But most were colonists who came with food and water. On your body's surface, all microbes come from the environment. Every corner of your skin is covered with microbes. No matter how you try, it's impossible to get rid of them. There are more microbes than human cells. Our genome consists of about 20,000 genes. The number of microbes' genes in the human body is about 2 to 20,000 million. That means that technically, we're not people, but microbes. Fortunately, it's not so bad. The genome of microbes complements our own. Such a model of existence reveals many opportunities for medicine. The human microbiome includes bacteria, fungi, and other microorganisms, all of them divided into many species, and each type performs its own functions. Some microbes are responsible for vitamin extraction from food. Others help the breakdown of destructive substances. Another type helps your tummy digest food. A separate group regulates your immune system, protects it against ills, parasites, and viruses. Some control weight. Simply put, microbes make your life better, help your body function, and affect your health. There are microorganisms that provoke many diseases. They impair immunity or affect vital organs. Imagine you know exactly which bacteria are responsible for feeling unwell. Next, you find a way to rid yourself of them. It can be some pill with poison against those microbes. You drink it, and the cure erases all the harmful pests inside your body. A disease might appear because of the lack of beneficial microbes. This is one of the ways doctors heal many people in the world. Now let's say you've determined a group of microbes that help strengthen muscles. Then you find out which trace element helps these bacteria work faster and more efficiently. You add this vitamin to food or just get a pill containing a billion of these microbes. As a result, your muscles grow twice as fast. The presence of some microbes or the lack of others can show the state of your entire body. A sample of your microbes can indicate your level of health or the presence of some disease. Any person can improve their body not only with the help of genetic engineering, but with microbial medicine. Studying human microbes is cheaper, more efficient, and faster than expensive, complex gene modifications. This area is just beginning to develop all over the world, but there are already some discoveries. Previously, humanity thought microbes were enemies. We made up many ways to destroy bacteria and viruses. But along with the harmful germs, these cures get rid of the good ones. Now scientists understand that microbes can both take away and save lives. So they started large-scale research on this subject. Let's have a look at a big panda. This animal with an ample supply of fat under its skin is omnivorous. It rarely eats meat. Its diet mostly consists of berries and bamboo shoots. But in winter, there's none of this. So pandas feed on bamboo leaves. That food is low-calorie, there's almost no proteins in it. But still, pandas don't lose weight after a cold winter. Recently, scientists found out how pandas do that. It's all thanks to a unique microbiome. Every winter, a lot of unique bacteria are born in their intestines. These microbes extract and synthesize helpful substances from bamboo leaves better than others, and thus preserve the panda's weight. Scientists put these bacteria inside field mice. Small rodents began to gain weight much faster. Hamburgers, cakes, and other heavy foods contain calories and help develop colonies of microbes that contribute to weight. Millions of species of microbes have millions of functions. In theory, each of these functions can be used for the sake of humans. 
So, imagine you need to lose or gain weight, and you just add these microbes to your lunch. Do you want to sleep better or fight drowsiness? Drink microbes that will affect the production of sleep hormones. Do you want to strengthen the bone tissue? Eh, no problem! Bacteria are not only inside our bodies, they're everywhere. Part of the planet is made up of microbes. These tiny organisms are constantly multiplying. Look, there are a trillion of them on your keyboard. One bacterium increases in size and splits into two bacteria. After a few minutes, these two increase and divide again. Four microorganisms appear. Each of them splits in two. The colony of bacteria is rapidly growing. With such quick reproduction, one microbe can make one ton of offspring in just 24 hours. After five days, bacteria will fill all the seas and oceans. They will weigh more than the whole planet. Under ideal conditions, bacteria could take over the whole world. However, this will never happen. There are no such perfect conditions for uncontrolled bacterial growth. The speed they multiply at is equal to the speed of their destruction. Dryness, water, light, high temperature, gases, humidity – all these phenomena help control their population. At the same time, microbes are in charge of most of the chemical reactions on Earth. An old apple on the ground is rotting because of germs and bacteria. Mold forms on bread because of microorganisms. But they don't just exist and affect the condition of any material and other living creatures. An endless battle for survival continues in the world of microorganisms. Giant bacteria absorb smaller ones. Microbes with spikes defeat long microbes. There are also viruses that penetrate bacteria and infect them with their cells. A small ball with a virus can destroy an entire colony of microbes. Viruses multiply and take over more and more territories until they meet strong immune cells on their way. There are also creatures resembling robots. They look like diamonds with mechanical legs. Despite this unusual appearance, they're 100% natural. We call them bacteriophages. They have only one purpose – to destroy all bacteria. Bacteriophages are additional protection of the planet from uncontrolled reproduction of microbes. When some microorganisms multiply, they leave decay waste. This waste is harmful to humans. Bacteriophages fight these microbes and save our lives. The coolest thing is that these defenders don't seek to take over the planet. They only attack bacteria. Every second, billions of microbes battle with billions of bacteriophages on any surface. Sounds like a video game. The crystal headed jumps on the bacterium and injects the genetic code inside it. This code has separate elements that connect to each other inside the microbe's body and becomes a new bacteriophage. Then it destroys the bacterium from the inside and goes for the next one. Look closely at your fingertip. There's a lot of life there. The strongest survive, the weak disappear. Wash it off, and new bacteria will come along with the water. Wipe your wet finger with a towel, and new germs will jump on you from there. And the battle will begin again. This is just the tip of your finger. Inside your body, some bacteria are fighting for your health against microbes that want to harm you. Some microbes in our intestine can be responsible for a good or bad mood. There are also parasitic bacteria that can affect our brain, the way we think, and our emotions. Some creatures control the behavior of animals and insects. Scientists constantly make discoveries in the world of microorganisms. So, bacteria are the rulers of our world. They appeared long before humans and the first animals, and most likely, they'll remain after us. Think about that. Well, here's some facts you'll find hard to digest. <laughs> Your stomach has a pretty incredible capacity. Being able to hold up to half a gallon of liquids, that's a whole large bottle of Coke. It's pretty hard to estimate how much hard food you can eat because it's processed with your teeth before it gets to your stomach. There's definitely not enough room for a turkey, but a good-sized chicken would probably fit in it. If you were asked where your stomach was, you would probably point to your tummy. Sorry, that's wrong. It's actually up here, hidden in between your ribs. Scientists believe that the appendix will disappear eventually. Nobody really knows why we need it, but some researchers claim it might have existed to help our ancestors digest tree bark. Because it's no longer part of our daily diet, the appendix isn't necessary and can disappear from our bodies without any consequences. 
The appendix isn't the only obsolete part of our body. Wisdom teeth aren't that useful either. Yeah, they used to come in handy whenever our ancestors lost some of their teeth. But the only thing they help us lose now is the money we spend extracting them. Almost all of our body is covered with hairs, even if we don't notice them. They grow even in the belly button. Their purpose is to catch lint. Check it out. See? Your liver acts as your own personal bodyguard, protecting you from toxins and many other things you don't want hanging around in your body. It's also pretty indestructible and can even regenerate. Only about 43% of you is actually you. Over 50% of the cells in your body belong to tiny little creatures that mainly live in your gut. Still, even though your own cells are fewer than microbial ones, there are, on average, about 100 trillion of them in you. See? You're not alone. With this in mind, your own genes are less than half of what you really consist of. If you take all the microbes dwelling within your body and count their genes, you'll find between 2 to 20 million. If you sleep, it doesn't mean all of your body sleeps. In fact, sometimes your brain has to work even harder when you're asleep. It needs to process tons of information, and reports usually take a lot of time. The nose definitely gets a good rest while you're sleeping. Amazingly, your sense of smell basically deactivates at night. You wouldn't even be bothered if there was a really terrible smell in your bedroom. No comment. The nose is probably one of the most underappreciated parts of the body. We wouldn't even be able to enjoy eating without it. About 80% of the taste of any food is thanks to the nose and its ability to recognize odors. If you hold your nose while eating, you will taste almost nothing. With no sense of smell, you're likely to recognize food mostly by texture. So an onion might seem no different than a big refreshing apple. Scientists used to believe we could distinguish about 10,000 smells, but they were wrong. Recent research showed that people are actually able to distinguish between more than a trillion smells. We also remember them better than anything else, and smells can even evoke some distant memories. Your nose just doesn't help you breathe and catch odors. It filters the air for sensitive throats and lungs. If we inhale dry air, the nose moistens it, cools it, and heats it if it's necessary. Also, the nose cleans the air of dirt. When you age, your brain is gradually reducing in size. By age 75, it's much smaller than at 30, and it starts shrinking by the age of 40. It happens to everyone and doesn't affect your mental strength in any way. Our brain can store only 7 bits in its short-term memory. Don't even try to compare your brain with a phone capacity. Not even the one you had back in 2005. That's why you can't even learn a phone number by heart. Our short-term memory functions just like a chalkboard. You can get some information, but sooner or later, you run out of space. To check your working memory capacity, try this test. Ask a friend to write a list of 10 words and read it to you. Most people recall 7 or fewer items from that list. Your RAM, or working memory, is an essential thing that we need to perform almost any everyday activity, including basic conversations, surfing the net, and even petting your dog. Our strongest and emotional memories are often fake. The central memory gives us the confidence to believe that we remember everything, even though most of the details are made up in our heads. Not only your brain shrinks as you get older, you too shrink dramatically. The bones get more brittle, the backbone gets compressed. A similar thing happens when you rest at night. Your bones kind of relax too. Because of this, you wake up taller in the mornings than you are at the end of the day. Among mammals, only humans can walk on two legs for their entire lives. You might think that kangaroos or gorillas move in the same way. But kangaroos use their tail as a third leg, and gorillas use their long arms to keep balance. Your bones take part in metabolism too. Since they mostly consist of calcium, when there's not enough of this element in your blood, bones start shedding it into the bloodstream, balancing your body. The same reaction works in reverse too. When there's too much calcium in your blood, it goes into the bones to be stored for later. The only bone to have a sense of humor in your body is inside your upper arm. That's why it's called the humerus. Okay, I made that one up. Moving along. 
The only bones that never grow are found in our ears. We can hear thanks to these tiny bones because they have adapted to transmit sound vibrations. Doctors call them the oscular chain. One of these hearing bones, the stapes, is the smallest bone in your entire body. It's no larger than a grain of rice. Our height, shape of our body, and skin color depend a lot on where our ancestors used to live. But we can adapt to new conditions even within our own lifespan. For example, if you move from plains to the mountains, you'll eventually develop more red blood cells to compensate for the lack of oxygen. And naturally, if you move from a colder climate to a hotter and sunnier one, your skin will get darker to adapt. Our lifespan is programmed within ourselves. They constantly renew and divide, but they have a sort of internal timer that stops at some point. Some cells also stop reproducing sooner than others. On average, cells cease dividing when we reach the age of 100. That means if we could find a way to trick ourselves into turning off the timer, we could potentially live forever. Body fat isn't just a nuisance. It acts as insulation material, energy reserve, and shock absorber. Your body sends the most fat into your waist region because that's where your internal organs are. If something happens to you, this layer of fat might protect your vitals from irreparable damage. Heads up! Your skull isn't a single bone. It actually consists of 28 different bones, many of which are fused together to protect your brain. The mandible, or the lower jaw, is the only skull bone that isn't fixed to the bone around it. It's attached with connective tissues and muscles. This is what makes it so mobile. You can move it in any direction you like. You see, the strongest muscles in your body aren't in your arms or legs. They're in your head. The masseter is the main muscle responsible for chewing, and it needs to be the strongest for you to eat normally. And you know those muscles that allow you to move your ears? Those are temporalis, located above your temples. They also help you chew your food. Now, we've got two really fast muscles. They control the eyelid closing. In fact, they're the fastest muscles in our body. Eyes are fragile and need protection, so the reflex that protects them needs to be as fast as lightning. These muscles can shut the eyelids in less than a tenth of a second. People with double-jointed thumbs can bend them backward. It looks super unusual, and very few people can do it. Still, it's totally okay. Even though it looks painful, it actually doesn't hurt at all for someone with a double-jointed thumb. Now, we recognize only purple-blue, green-yellow, and yellow-red colors. Everything else is a combination of these three. It's impossible to calculate how many of these combinations the human eye sees, because every single person has slight vision differences. But it's about 1 million combinations on average. You see? The cornea is the only part of your body with living cells that doesn't have blood vessels. It gets nutrients and oxygen directly from the tear fluid on the outside and the thick watery substance you have between the cornea on the inside and also from the nerve fibers connected to the cornea. That's why contact lenses used to be a potential issue. The older ones were reducing oxygen supply, since the cornea mostly gets oxygen from the outside. This problem was solved, or at least reduced, when silicone hydrogel lenses came to the market. Some other parts of your body with no blood vessels are your nails, hair, outer skin layers, and tooth enamel. Did you notice your sweat sometimes smells of onions after your workout? You have nothing to worry about. There are two types of sweat glands in your skin. The first kind of glands are located on certain areas of your body, like the groin region and the armpits. They produce a specific oily fluid, which is a response to certain emotional experiences. Another type of sweat gland is way more common. They're distributed all over your body and are responsible for the specific sweat you get after the workout. The sweat cools your body down as it evaporates from your skin. It's 99% water, so it's practically odorless. Well, at least when it first leaves the pores and comes to the surface of your skin. But there are many types of bacteria on the human skin, and they feed on the nutrients in that sweat, together with skin flakes. One of the byproducts of this is specific chemicals, 
and their smell can sometimes strongly remind you of onion. You may have noticed you produce more saliva when you go for a run, especially if it's a short jog in cold weather. But if you're running a marathon and it's a nice warm day outside, you'll produce less saliva. It's your body trying to offset the drying effect since you breathe through your mouth way more. But your body becomes more dehydrated over longer periods, which is why it's trying to conserve water by reducing saliva production. Every training you do, no matter how intensive it is, also makes you secrete more of a specific type of protein. It makes the saliva more viscous and sticky, which is why you may feel like your mouth is dry way more after your workout. Humans see the world 15 seconds out of date, which means your brain constantly keeps you a little bit in the past. This way, it helps you stabilize your vision of the world around you. Your eyes receive a huge amount of visual information. Yep, literally millions of colors, shapes, and ever-changing motion wherever you turn. It's not an easy task for your brain to process all that. The visual world alters all the time because of changes in viewpoint, light, and the rest of the outer factors. Your visual input changes because you need to blink. Plus, your head, eyes, and your entire body are always in some sort of motion. Your brain has to establish a mechanism that can create illusory stability. It automatically smooths your visual input. It doesn't analyze every little visual snapshot. It's like a time machine. You actually perceive an average of things you saw in the past 15 seconds at any given moment. The brain pulls together objects so they appear more similar to each other. That's why it tricks you into believing you're in stable surroundings. If your brain kept you updated in real time, the world would feel like a very, very chaotic place with constant changes in movement, light, and shadow, which would probably feel like you were hallucinating all the time. Your bones are really strong, but your teeth, which we also consider as part of the skeletal system, are even stronger. That's because of the enamel, the hard outer layer of your tooth. The enamel keeps the tissue and the delicate nerves inside your teeth safe. You're basically burning calories while you're thinking. When you rest and don't engage in any particular activity, except for the basics, which includes digesting, breathing, and keeping yourself warm, it's the stage where your brain uses up to 20 to 25% of the total energy of your body. That means your body will burn around 350 to 450 calories per day while pretty much doing nothing. We're not the only ones in the animal kingdom with such a mechanism. Some small mammals like the minuscule pygmy marmoset and the tiny tree shrew devote the same percentage of their total body energy to their brain. Most of the energy the brain burns is to help its cells, the neurons, to communicate with each other. They do it via chemical signals the brain transmits across synapses, those special cell structures. So the brain directs a lot of energy towards synapses in order to make them work. Your brain never really rests. Even when you're sleeping, certain parts are active. So your brain needs its fuel to work, and you're basically burning calories in your sleep. The more demanding mental tasks you take throughout the day, the more calories you burn. So, if you skip today's workout, solve some Sudoku. Do you like to rush with your ice cream? Sometimes it pays off, but if you do it often, you must know the feeling of brain freeze pretty well. It's a pretty intense and uncomfortable feeling that comes from the front or sides of your head right after you drink or eat something cold, such as a slushy drink, ice cream, or an ice pop. Some people even go through a similar sensation whenever they're exposed to cold air. Scientists are still not sure exactly why this happens, but one of the theories is the cold substance stimulates a cluster of nerves located at the back of the palate. Another theory says the blood vessels in the roof of the mouth and sinuses quickly constrict because the temperature in your mouth drops before they dilate again. Brain freeze is not something dangerous that you should be seriously worried about. And no, hanging over the table, groaning, or clasping your head in your hands won't help much. Some people like to sleep a lot, 
Hey, <laughs> guilty as charged. But some have a certain condition called familiar natural short sleepers, which means they're kind of immune to sleep deprivation. About 1% of our population has it. They can fall short on sleep and feel pretty good about it. They're fine with sleeping for six hours per night. This amount would rack the majority of people after a couple of nights. The human eye normally has three cones. That means we can recognize approximately a million different shades in the green, red, and blue spectrums of colors. But there are some people with a rare condition, so-called tetrachromats, that have four cones in their eyes. This allows them to see ultraviolet shades, which means they can distinguish 100 million distinct colors. Did you know your skeleton is all wet? I mean, your entire body mostly consists of water, up to 60%. That fluid is not only in your organs, muscles, and skin. It's in your skeleton, too. Your bone mass is almost one-third water. There's this amazing hidden network a human body holds inside. Blood vessels are really small, but if you could line them all up, you'd get something huge. Your entire body boasts a network of 60,000 miles of blood vessels. One of the ways to keep your network healthy is by eating right. Have you ever wondered why our distant relatives, the primates, are so much stronger than us? In many ways, our bodies are very similar. Look at the chimp's muscle structure, for example. But our closest primate relatives are approximately 1.35 times stronger than us. The human body developed more slow-twitch muscle fibers compared to the rest of the primates. This type of muscle fiber is a less powerful one, but it lets us endure more than other primates and do things like foraging and hunting, activities that helped our distant ancestors to survive. That's also the reason why we can run a marathon. A monkey could never do it, but we'd still lose in a strength competition. Laughter is contagious. It's not just a metaphor. Researchers have found that strong emotions can make the brain activity of different people sink. Laughter is something science usually links with social creatures. People are almost 30 times more likely to laugh when in some social situations, hanging out with their friends or people they feel relaxed with. One of the theories says that you're probably going to join when you see your friend laughing because humans are empathetic beings. Your brain will release endorphins when you're laughing. These are special chemicals that make you feel safe and at ease. So we're not sure why exactly our laughter is contagious, but it feels really good, so... <laughs> Join us on the Bright Side of Life and laugh away. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends.